I made a rather esoteric video at the start of the year when I didn't really have any subscribers, which was a tribute to the excellent Primitive Technology YouTube channel, uh, because I was demonstrating something called Primitive Reflexes, so it was really just a bad pun. Because it was in the Primitive Technology style, the video was silent with all the information conveyed via subtitles, and it was kind of experimental. In my defense, I didn't really think anyone would be watching, but the channel's got a bit bigger since then, and I've had quite a lot of comments saying, please could I remake the video with more conventional narration? But what I thought might be more fun is to actually revisit to see how reflexes have changed over the subsequent months. Um, so I'm very pleased to um, invite my patient back onto the channel, and he's kindly agreed, although he has claimed all ad revenue from both this video and the previous one due to unlicensed copyright infringement. So please welcome Patient B back onto the channel, or to give him his full name, Case Francis. Uh, his older brother is, of course, called Control. Welcome to the channel. I normally treat adult patients, so it's quite uncommon for them to sit on my lap, although not unheard of. So what actually is a reflex? Well, put simply, it's an involuntary response to a stimulus. I made a pretty long video about the most well-known reflex, the knee jerk, which is a classic example of a myotatic reflex arc. The tendon hammer strikes the knee, stimulates a stretch receptor, sensory neuron, which communicates directly with a motor neuron and makes the quadriceps muscles contract. The brain is not involved with that at all. However, the reflexes I'm talking about today are much more complicated than that. They do involve the brain, but at a subconscious level, and I don't think we give them enough credit. Stuff like how your body maintains blood pressure or its temperature, something as apparently simple as blinking, or more complex ones like one I talked about in detail in a video I made about free divers, um, the dive reflex. The reason I made that first video is because while there are quite a few videos online explaining how to examine for primitive reflexes because they form part of a routine medical examination on a baby that a doctor would do, but I didn't find any explaining what primitive reflexes actually are and why they're so special. We treat newborn babies as stupid, and they totally are, but have you ever stopped to consider for a second how amazing it is that they have these complicated mechanisms all ready to go hardwired into their brain from day one? Mechanisms designed to maximize their chance of survival. And how incredible it is that we share so many of these with our mammalian cousins. A newborn chimp, human, or even a dog have so much in common. How anybody can observe that and deny that we evolved from a common ancestor is beyond me. Primitive reflexes is the name given to a set of behaviours that a newborn baby will exhibit, which gradually disappear as they get older. Why do we examine babies for primitive reflexes? Well, to ensure normal neurological development. The absence of a reflex when it should be there, an exaggerated reflex, or one that persists when it should have gone, are all signs of delayed or otherwise abnormal neurology. The first reflex is the moro. It's sometimes referred to as the mother of all reflexes. It appears as early as 25 weeks gestation in the womb, and it's closely associated with our fight-flight-fright response. It's normally tested by allowing the baby to safely experience the sensation of falling. Moro himself, after whom it's named, used to hit babies around the side of the head. We don't do that anymore. It's also triggered by anything that gives the baby a startle, for example, a loud noise, but because babies are Stupid, they often also trigger it themselves uh, for no apparent reason. And indeed, this is one of the reasons for swaddling a newborn baby. It's to prevent themselves waking up from sleep with a moro. Stupid babies. Perhaps that's a little unfair. It suggested that myoclonic jerks that we all get as we're falling asleep might indeed be a related phenomenon. The moro is a really fascinating reflex. It should be symmetric and disappear by about six months. Now, if I try to elicit a moro on patient B, he has spent almost as long outside the womb as he did inside. And because both of my sons have inherited an adrenaline junkie gene, no idea where they get that from, he now positively enjoys being flung about the place. Yeah, that didn't sound quite right. <laughs> Please don't call social services. One theory is that because the full morrow consists of not only the arms going out, but then coming back in, is that it might assist baby if it falls off mama to then grab onto her again. Now it's very unusual to see a moro reflex retained beyond the first four to six months. Something that isn't a retained moro but is an abnormal startle response is a condition that made my top 10 best named disease list back in February, the jumping Frenchman of Maine syndrome. It's a rare 
pathological startle response in adults, which gets its name from a group of lumberjacks who exhibited the reflex described in 1878. Like the Moreau, rooting and sucking are reflexes that appear in the womb. Very premature babies might not have developed them, which is why they can't always feed properly, but for a term baby, they are pre-programmed to seek out and devour mama's milk from their first minute. Of course, suckling is very much what defines mammals. Our name comes from the Latin for breast, mama. Rooting, turning the head towards stimulus, and the suck reflex should both go by about three to four months. The baby can still suck, of course, but he can choose when he wants to do it. So if he wants to cry and I give him a dummy, he'll look me in the eye and say, do you really think this is going to work at my age? Whereas with a younger baby, it's involuntary. That tender moment when your newborn baby holds your finger and you feel a special connection to them, like they've just reached out and touched your heart because they held on to you so tight, they must know that you're their parent. Yeah, that's just an involuntary reflex. Indeed, we think the grasp response, as this is called, is a remnant of when we were covered in fur. Newborn baby primates, who share almost all of these reflexes, cling on to their mothers in this way. You can tell the grasp reflex has gone as patient B can now handle toys, opening and closing his hands at will. The asymmetric tonic neck reflex gives babies that cute sleeping position that we've all seen. When the head is turned to the left, the left hand goes out and vice versa. It's thought this might play a part in getting through the birth canal or to bring each hand into the baby's vision so that they can um, discover their hands. The asymmetric tonic neck reflex disappears by six months, as you can see. So what can this useless old patient actually show us? He's been pretty much no help at all so far. Well, at eight and a half months, he might still have a couple of reflexes that he had before. He might have a gallant response. He demonstrated it nicely at three weeks old. He's a lot heavier now, and coincidentally, I'm about as strong as a baby, so he's a bit harder to hold in one hand, but let's give it a try. The gallant response is where you stroke down one side of the spine and the spine flexes to the same side. It's thought to assist with crawling, and again, it's possibly related to getting through the birth canal. The planter or Babinski reflex is one we examine for in every age group. If you're a healthy adult and I scratch the bottom of your foot, your toes will curl downwards. But in the first year of life before babies learn to walk, or in an adult who has suffered something like a stroke, the toes go up. And indeed, you can see patient B still has an upgoing planter, which is entirely normal. Patient B's elder brother, patient A, or control, demonstrates how by three years old, the planter response is down going. Other reflexes not shown, symmetric tonic neck reflex, the parachute reflex, stepping, dive, crawling, babkin, and Perez reflexes. All right, mate, mum's gone out. Let's watch some um, Paw Patrol, all right? What was the Netflix password? You had to remember it. Bro, it was your job to remember the password. You know, in the entire time I've known you, I don't think you've remembered a single password correctly. <laughs> There's no point making a fuss. I Never rely on a baby to remember your login details and stop using their names as your easy to guess passwords by using Dashlane. But you already know what a password manager is, so let me explain why Dashlane is so much more. Making a purchase online, but the baby's eaten your credit card? No problem, Dashlane securely stores and autofills credit card information. Worried your baby's identity has been hacked? Dashlane has built-in dark web monitoring, sending you alerts if your personal information is leaked on the dark web. Does your baby access unsecured Wi-Fi networks when he's reading the paper over a baby chino at Starbucks? Dashlane is also a VPN. Yes, it is a military-grade encrypted password manager, dark web monitor, and VPN all at once. So visit dashlane.com slash medlife to get 30 whole English days of Dashlane Premium. Test drive all of this awesome stuff. And if you're really serious about online security, and I know about those pictures you posted on iCloud, so you really should be, use the code MEDLIFE and get 10% off. Dashlane, the best way to protect your baby. Remember people, please visit the sponsor links as it helps the channel keep going instead of giving me money directly, as I'll just spend that on fish curry.